Hi, I'm Talissa. And I'm Rachel, and this is Transatlantic Crime, a true crime podcast that covers stories from each side of the pond. Every week, we will both cover a separate story with a running theme. Disclaimer, this podcast will contain swearing and details that some people may find offensive. If you are of a sensitive disposition, listener discretion is advised. Welcome to Transatlantic Crime. Crime. So close. Hi, Talissa. How are you? I am good, Rachel. How are you? I'm great. (gasps) Great. (laughs) How was the Jubilee? That's this weekend, right? Yeah, we got four days off because the Queen's been on the throne for 70 years, which is like the longest reigning monarch ever, like beats Queen Victoria. Yeah. She'll never die. I don't think she's ever going to fucking die. (laughs) (laughs) The oldest woman in, in Britain is like 112, I think. So mm. the queen, and think how not good her life would have been compared to the queen. So <laughs> she's going to fucking nail it. Like the queen mother lived to like a hundred and something, definitely. So yeah. I was saying it's to Carly, do you imagine fucking 80 more years of this till you're 112? <laughs> like, I, I couldn't <laughs> fucking hack it. I feel like I could do it if I, if my body didn't age but I feel unfortunately like that's I could not do it if I under was the queen like, <laughs> yeah if you've got everyone doing everything for you and all you have to do is spend time with your little corgis and yeah write some letters every once in a while then you've got the best sure. of everything as well you do like, yeah like a lot, a lot of people in England are like there's a crisis there's like a cost of living crisis going on and um yeah basically companies and the government are dicking us over left right and center and it's just cheeky mm-hmm. of the queen to be like oh like i have to do fuck all and i've like got loads of money and like, let's celebrate here me. have a day off yeah me <laughs> yeah um but yeah and like i get not being a royalist in theory like i totally understand why people aren't and i understand that it's rich people not good poor people need money like I get that mm-hmm. but I can't yeah. help but like it I just like the history like mm. have you have you seen the crown yeah I've watched some of it yeah yeah and we've got like a thousand year old monarchy I just love it I can't help I've got a soft spot for her the queen <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it it's the same as feeling that way about true crime it's like it's bad and it's shitty and a lot of people were are in pain from it but it's still really interesting to follow and it's your face right now. <laughs> oh, I'm disgusted with myself <laughs> for many reasons. So this weekend we went to a fate. I don't know if you have those, but it's What's kind that? of like, so a fate is like a, it's always in the daytime. It's very wholesome, very kid friendly. It's usually a village fate. So it's everybody in what, how that do you village. How that? F-E-T-E, with like an accent okay. over it. Yeah. I think it might be French for like party or something. But it's, okay. uh, uh, you all gather in like the village green and there's like old ladies bake cakes and then there's um, usually somebody playing music, a band or something, and then a bric-a-brac stall, a secondhand book stall. Amaz- there's an amazing um, game called Whack-A-Rat which you probably wouldn't like, but it's like (laughs) somebody drops, which is basically a sock fashioned as a rat. They drop it through a pipe and you have to whack it with a a bat, but you have to like time it so that you whack it. It's so difficult. I've never seen anyone do it. What what is this? The 1930s? It really felt like I'd gone back to the 1930s. (laughs) It was so fucking quaint and charming. So I did that and there was yeah. a dog show. There was like, and the prizes are like waggiest tail, um, most handsome. <laughs> like it's just all Aww. so wholesome. And I had like three ciders and it was, yeah, it was just lovely. And I had like a Oreo cheesecake off the cake stool. And then wow. we also have like a tombola, which is where you, there's bottles of like wine or beer or but then there's some like booby prizes. So some of them are like 
a fruit shoot drink, a kid's drink, yeah. or like a bottle of water. <laughs> so you might get something yeah. good or you might get something crap or you might get something nothing at all. So yeah. you pay like six pounds for like 12 tickets and then you have to see if any of your numbers are on the bottles. Uh, yeah. I didn't didn't win anything. So that was annoying. Oh, <laughs> damn it. Yeah. But it was, yeah, lovely, wholesome day. But then today I feel like I've been run over by a fucking bus because I went to a fate for half a day. Like, <laughs> this is where I'm at. It's just <laughs> exhausting. You need a nap. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a lovely, lovely day. Very British. Very quaint. Very Extremely. cute. What about you? What have you been up to? Setting off fireworks? I've been working... <laughs> High fiving eagles. Working a lot. Uh, yeah, obviously shooting off guns. <laughs> yeah. uh, eating meat. Yeah, um, having a what else hoe down. Very, very American. Whatever Going that to is. A, a cowboy show. Yeah, the rodeo. <laughs> the yeah. rodeo. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Um, no, I haven't been doing any of that. I have pre- been preparing. I'm very excited but very nervous tomorrow i'm getting this thing removed from my mouth oh my god it's been such a journey yes, it's been such a journey and it really but has. i am really nervous because it's going to be Why? painful and it's going to nah, be inject uh, you recovery they will but that part is painful that oh, part yeah. i hate when they stick a needle in your mouth sorry everyone i'm not gonna lie <laughs> it sounds pretty gnarly but you're hardcore and you can do this oh i'm so nervous i believe in you but thanks that reminds me i am going to be taking a week off so i think you are going to have a special guest next week right yes we will do that it's going to be a surprise everyone send me well wishes because i'm really nervous but i am really happy to get this stupid thing out of my mouth oh mate i'll be thinking of you i'm you can get through it you're hardcore I believe in you. Thanks. Thanks, pal. (laughs) That's all right. Let me know how it goes. Yeah. Um, Other than that, I haven't really been doing anything other than... You've just been sat around thinking about that all weekend. (laughs) (laughs) I I have. And working. And working. So... You are like 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 fucking Rihanna. You're like, work, 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 work. (laughs) That's all you ever do. (laughs) It's true. I love working, so... Well, yeah. I don't love it, but yeah, I'm really well, excited. I keep talking about this show that I'm working on that's coming out next month. That's what I've been working on. We're almost done with it, and we'll probably talk about it on the podcast, because, Talissa, I want yeah. you to watch it, too. Yeah, I'll watch the shit out of it. And now yeah. I know what bits like you particularly <laughs> do as well, after like finding out, so that's cool. Um, yeah. Oh, I remember, I promised that I was going to read out somebody's uh, correspondence to us. Ooh. And it was to do with, you know, we we were wondering about babies on passports. Yeah. <laughs> it was to do with that. It was a while ago and I forgot until okay. now. With her. <laughs> so it's Lauren Churchill. She Hi, Lauren. is a Patreon, I believe, and fan of the show and she's been really supportive. So absolute babe. But she said, just listening to this week's podcast... And you were talking about passports. Until 1998, children could travel on their parents' passports. Then the law changed and they had to have their own. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. That's in England, right? Yeah. Or the UK. Mm Mm-hmm. And that was relevant to our story that we did a couple of weeks ago. It was the one I did when we were in LA. So it was the guy who had loads of women. He had like women on the go for his spying. And that's how she found out that he was a dad, I think. She looked at his passport. That makes so much sense. But that was in the 2000s. But it was 1998 that it changed. So he might have had it on there. And then, could your passport last for 10 years here? Yeah, that's very true. I mean, that was a great shout. Either way, she ignored some mahoosive red flags. So, (laughs) (laughs) good call, Lauren. Oh, yeah. I was basically really tired last night after the fate. Tom doesn't go to bed until like midnight or later and I can't fucking deal with that I was like I'm so tired I'm gonna bed (laughs) so I went to bed and um I had like earplugs in and I had a face mask over my face so blind and deaf for like 
for all circ- I'm just completely like devoid of senses and I thought do you know what like before I go to sleep I'm just gonna stretch my legs a bit so I just put the face mask up a tiny bit so I could see like a slither and then like I yeah. went by the side of the bed and I like you know when you do like you know bend down and touch your toes I did that and then as I raised my head I thought I can feel I feel like you know when you just get the sixth sense that someone's watching you fucking looked yeah. at the door and Thomas just stood there and I was like make a noise <laughs> <laughs> and he was like I, I thought I made enough of a noise coming up the stairs <laughs> and I was like <laughs> I was like, fucking hell, there will be like no more watching me sleep, no more. And he was like, what are you even doing? And I was like, I'm stretching. (laughs) It's like a horror movie. It was honestly like a shot from a horror movie. Just uh, watching, like stood at the door. I was like. (gasps) I did that to someone at work this week where I was sitting in a a desk that I don't. (laughs) <laughs> I was sitting at a desk that I don't normally sit in and I was just sitting there, you know, working and someone comes out. I th- assume that they saw me and then they turned around and they jumped and they were like, I was not expecting you to be there. And it, it reminded me, th- those kinds of things always remind me of in the sixth sense when he walks into the kitchen and all the cupboards are open. The mom walks oh into my the God. kitchen. And all the cupboards are open (laughs) and the kid is just sitting there terrified. (laughs) Honestly, I'm surrounded by people who are like fucking so quiet. Like Carly's so quiet. Tom's really quiet. And I appreciate it like on one level because I really fucking hate people that make loads of noise like for no reason. Yeah. But then some like then you realize that it's a necessary evil so that you don't fucking (laughs) shit yourself every time you turn around. (laughs) Thinking there's an intruder. That's one reason why... I know that you sleep with earplugs and everything and all. Yeah. You basically have to shut everything down. <laughs> but I, I, I really can't do. do that because I am too scared of those moments that I'm going to wake up and something or someone is going to be staring <laughs> down at me or it's too late for something to, for me to do something. I went through it in my head and I was like, what would I even do if he was an intruder? Like, I was by the side of the bed. I had nothing (laughs) near me. And he was in the doorway. And I was in, like, a bedroom with no other exit. So I was fucked. (laughs) I was like, what would I even have done? I was like, maybe picked up the lamp and swung it in with that. But, like, he's a lot bigger than me. So... (laughs) I think that all the time, like, what am I going to use in my bedroom as, like... And it's my lamp. Yeah. my lamp. But you're going to need to do a Georgie and stash a knife and a candle and... (laughs) Well, I can't remember what else she had in there, but it was like a survival kit on the side of her bed. I also have a... For a while, I slept with my tennis racket, but that wouldn't do anything. That's just going to bounce off their face. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I didn't sleep with it, but it was like on the side of my bed. But now I do actually have a baseball bat. Yeah. But I also think... Whoever breaks in is going to be stronger than me, and they're probably going to use that bat. Like, so that's what roll. I always think of, too. So like, at the end of the day, I just decided that I would jump out the window. Yeah, but in England, there's a, the houses are all double stories. Nobody lives in a bungalow unless they're old. Whereas in <laughs> I've noticed in America, loads of houses are on one level. Yeah. Unless it's an apartment. Yeah, unless unless you're in an apartment. Yeah. Yeah. Which is because you just got so much room. So you don't need mm-hmm. to stack stuff on top of one another. I think, yeah, it went through my mind what I would do and I'd just be dead. And then to- I said to Tom, oh, that's my worst nightmare. There's just some fucking random man in the house. And he was like, well, you'd have to get through me first to get to you. So I- I'm probably dead downstairs. Aww. And I thought, that's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> that's sweet, but also terrifying at the same oh, time. So you're dead. And while I'm being attacked, I go, oh, he sacrificed himself for me. Ah." (laughs) (laughs) While I'm dying. At least you've had that. You have that. Yeah, he's like, you can die knowing I I tried (laughs) to save you. Or hopefully, Talissa, that noise will wake you up. And then I'll get the fuck out. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, I think that's a good segue into (laughs) our two-parter this week, which Mm -hmm. we're going to continue talking about LA crimes. Yeah, there's so many. 
I started so watching. Many. I started watching a random documentary today, The Toolbox Killers, or like an ID uh, oxygen program, and it's about the Toolbox yeah. Killers, and they were in LA. Right. Do you I remember don't know them? much about them though? Oh, it's no. a good. It's really good. Like this journalist basically gets in with one of them because they were like a pair, um, mm-hmm. and starts talking to him in prison when he's in his seventies, and. You know, sometimes like they get flattered by a female journalist's attention and then they yes. get really into talking to them. Like, yeah, she managed to just weasel her way in yeah. and talk to him. And he was ex- he explains like all the murders to her and stuff. And that fucking horrible. That does sound very familiar. Let me tell you who they are. That actually. was something that happened in the 70s, right? Yeah. And they only kidnapped like young pretty blonde girls with blue eyes pretty much and yeah tortured them horribly took photos and recordings of it and stuff oh it's lawrence bitka right. and ray nor and roy norris they had five victims they had five victims from june to october 1979 so imagine if they weren't caught wait june july august september that's one a month i know yeah, yeah, and they they kind so of had they a they kept doing that. They had a thing where they wanted to go capture someone that's thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, like all the teen ages. Ew. Fucking gross. Like one of them was yeah. a convicted rapist, and the other guy was just a massive psychopath. Lawrence Bittaker was like a really intelligent psychopath. He had an IQ of like one hundred and thirty-eight. You have to have an IQ of over one hundred and thirty to be a Mensa. And then, which is like an intelligence, I don't know, just like we're clever group. So he's super clever and he got put into prison for stabbing someone, um, but he didn't kill them. Okay. And then he met this Roy Norris guy who was a sex offender who'd never murdered anybody, but had raped two women. And then they met in prison and then they would like write down all these horrible fantasies of what they wanted to do to women and then sell them to the other prisoners so they could like read it. Oh, they're just so Gross. grim. Yeah. It's so interesting how true crime is just full of... If those two men never met, they probably wouldn't have gotten to that horrible stage that they got to. But for some reason, the stars were aligned. I and know. And they met and did horrible things. Like, those two met in prison, which I kind of get. Mm. But then the people mm-hmm. who meet in just in normal life, like how do those right. conversations come up? Right. <laughs> like, Fred West of like Fred and Rose West, they would meet people and then they would say something really gross. And then mm. if the person was like, uh, they would go, oh, we're only joking. Test the See waters kind of thing. Is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I think that's what they do on the outside kind of thing. But then, like, right, loads, of, right. loads of pedophiles, like, find each other somehow, don't they? And, like, send each other pictures in little groups and stuff. I know. It's, it's so like, How do you fuck it? Have they got a secret sign that we don't know about? Like... It's like me and you, Talissa. Like... Oh, I guess. We started talking about... <laughs> we started just talking about murders and true crime. And it was just like, well, I guess this works. I guess I, we'll keep talking I think about I'm, it. I think I'm better than... You're like, you think you're better than those people. You're not. <laughs> Everyone finds their peas in a pod, I guess. There's a lid for like, every pot. <laughs> there's a lid for every pot. And it's, you know, it's the same for like, if I find someone who loves talking about movies or who loves talking about history or who loves talking about true crime or whatever, I just think it's interesting when criminals randomly find each other and then start taking action on those weird fantasies that they're probably sharing with each other that like you said like how do they come up like how do these things get (sighs) so extreme that they're talking about them to each other and they both think it's okay yeah well they uh, part of this documentary i was watching was saying that the guy in it they took polaroids of one another because they said they were going to take somebody up to Wait there, let me actually find out where the location is because you might know it because this is to do with uh, LA. California? Yeah. California, yeah. So they would take them to... I mean, it looks like a lovely place to go and walk. Obviously, you don't really want to do it now. But... um, (laughs) Oh, San Gabriel Mountains. Okay. Do you know where that is? Yeah. It's like East LA. It's like 
way past Pasadena. Not that people are going to know, but you just keep going east. And mm. if you look at a map of L.A. and you keep going east, there is the Los Angeles forest, mm-hmm. which the San Gabriel Mo- Mountains are oh. in that. They're like the furthest east. It sounds um, so it's lovely above as well. a place. It is. It's really beautiful. Like you have all these mountains that you're looking at. And if you drive all the way to like Rancho Cucamonga, that's. <laughs> that sounds above made that. up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's on the way to San Bernardino. Yeah. I've seen so some horrifying have- things on this map already. There's a bridge to nowhere, <laughs> a fucking snake, something called Snake Pit. Yeah. What the yeah. hell? <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure or Bill and Ted's... I've only ever watched it once. Any of <laughs> yeah. Well, that area, that's what I always think of when I think of that area, which is like nice, suburban, like nice place to grow up. You have mm-hmm. the mountains in the background. Yeah. Small town kind of. Not LA. No. Yeah. But he said, and this is my fucking worry, Rachel, whenever we go anywhere. Yeah. He was like, I took them there because no one could hear them scream. Mm. That's my fucking worry with all the parks <laughs> confirmed by a serial killer. <laughs> like, but to be fair, he didn't go on the trails. He went on he went on the fire roads, which I'm assuming are like roads ma- especially made for fire engines to get in and put out yes. forest fires. Yes, like, exactly. So there's you shouldn't no be going need on. to worry, Talissa. <laughs> there's plenty of people on the trails all the time. That's where we'll stick. That's where I stick when I go on my hikes. Still, we'll take the bat. So, what? sorry, what I was trying to get across was he took, they took photos with a Polaroid of them pointing down the ravines and sent them into prison. And to anyone else, it just looks like an innocent photo, but they were basically telling Mm. their fellow prisoner that they were carrying out their plan that they had talked about in prison. Wow. So grim. Yes. So, yeah, there's loads of pictures of both of them just stood there smiling, pointing down the ravines. I'm just imagining the prisoners receiving this photo and being like, okay, cool. I know. That's it. Like, they're pretty (laughs) bored, I guess, in there, but still. Yeah, I'd really recommend the documentary. It was fucking good. What's it called? It's just called The The Toolbox Killers, and it's on Now TV in the UK, um, but it's on Oxygen in the US. Okay. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so that's pretty good. And then I also watched a documentary today called OJ the tr- the I think it's called OJ the True Story or the Full Story or something. It's about um OJ is innocent and they think that his son did the murder of Nicole no. Brown. Well, what? hear me out, right? So <laughs> this is their evidence. Ron Goldman put up a massive fight when he was murdered. Um, Yeah. For those who don't know about, like, the OJ murder, basically, Ron Goldman... Like, I've seen so many different stuff, uh, so many different things saying, like, he was her boyfriend. He was Nicole Simpson's boyfriend. Or he was... Right. um, They they didn't know each other. They were just acquaintances. Or or they were just friends. Or, like, there's low. But some people said they saw him riding around in her Porsche. And some people said he'd been to the house before. But he was kind of, like, allegedly, he was her cocaine dealer. So he might have gone to her house for that. He might have got in her car for that. Like, you don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. And she had both her kids in the house as well that night. So it's not that likely that she's going to have someone over, like... She's right. got plenty of opportunity to, when they're with OJ, or go to a hotel or whatever. Like, um, right. so yeah, they're trying to say that OJ came over and murdered his ex-wife because he was in a rage that uh, Ron Goldman was there, and so Ron Goldman knew karate and he put up a massive fight. And then the people on this documentary say OJ didn't have like enough wounds on him like the next day to indicate that he had been in a fight like the kind of fight he would have been in to but he still did defend himself he had three he had scratches on his knuckles basically and then um werner spitz who is like such a famous um forensic 
I think he's a forensic pathologist, but he's super famous. He did like, uh, he's been on documentaries about Jean Benet Ramsey. He was in The Staircase, um, really old German guy. And he says that the marks on OJ's finger fit like nail marks. So as if he's either strangled Nicole or had his arm around her neck in a headlock and she's got her acrylic nails in his hand and tried to get his hand off. Um, mm-hmm. That's what Werner Spitz says they're from. And then somebody else counters that with, but the blood type that was under her fingernails wasn't OJ's blood type. It was blood type B. So maybe it was somebody else that did the murder. Right. Um, so that's another thing that they bring up. Another thing they bring up is uh, the knives that OJ had in his possession like weren't substantial enough to make the wounds that they both had. And OJ's son, Jason, was a chef and he had um, he had knives that he would take everywhere with him as a chef. So another one of their arguments was they think it's him because he had knives and he also had um, like some mental issues and had tried to kill an ex-girlfriend previously. And How old was his son at the time? Um, he was 24. Like I'm, I don't know if I'm sold on the fact that think, somebody else did it well the main thing that they used to get oj free during his trial was that was the glove the glove mm-hmm. that didn't the gloves fit didn't him. fit yeah yeah and so they i'm wondering if that documentary addresses that part too with the son uh, they don't address it with the sun. They just kind of address that it doesn't fit. But I mean, like from my point of view, that was a ridiculous. Like if the glove doesn't fit, you have to acquit. Like that was a ridiculous thing yeah. to say because truly those yes. gloves were soaked in blood and they were leather. Yeah. So they've gotten wet right. and then stiff with blood. Um, yeah. And they could have shrunk through that. And then he was wearing a rubber glove when he tried them on. That makes it fucking impossible to put on your hand. Like, right. it's just fucking, <laughs> it's just stupid, like, the whole glove thing. Um, I mean, like, there are parts of the OJ murder for me that are a little bit hard to reconcile. Like, the fact that he um, he would have been absolutely covered in blood and he wasn't. And there was, right. like, a tiny speck of blood on the car and they were like, oh. It's like, he his hands would have been dripping with blood, like given yeah. what he did or given you know what whoever killed them did so and there was also like blood on nicole's body that was that was like dropped from above and they never even tested that they just put her in a body bag and took her away yeah that's the other thing that i remember from just reading and and watching that really famous really well made documentary um oj in america was that mm-hmm. the police work was just bad. Oh, it was they just were really sloppy. Shitty forensic work. And it was also the 90s. So, like, you could, I don't know if you could do DNA. You could only do, like, blood type, um, mm. I think. And that's why they had, like, blood types. But I'm not sure if they could do, like, a full blown, uh, if anybody knows and wants to tell us, then go for it. But I don't think they could do, like, a full blown DNA profile. And I'm not sure if they started taking. Uh, DNA from prisoners at that point there were handprints on the back as well of um, Ron Goldman's shirt where someone right. had like grabbed the shirt and twisted it as in like they're trying mm. to hold him back or they're fighting with him and yeah. they wanted to test that for fingerprints because we've got like new technology now that can get fingerprints in blood off of fabric and mm. the LA police are like no fuck it it's over like it's it's the case is closed in our eyes like we're not testing anything else again which i wish they would it's like so ha- it's so frustrating for the families who are still fighting they're still fighting for oj to give them money they're still yeah. fighting to just prove that he did it and yeah. it's frustrating that the even the police are like no sorry it's over i think like even if he didn't do it he either knows who did or he was involved because it kind of reminds me of Jean Benet Ramsey, where yeah. if the brother did it, then the parents are completely covering up for him. Yeah. And the same with OJ. If OJ 
if OJ's son did it, then he's just covering up for him and he's... He's, like, totally as guilty. Know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, that just was the, the fact s- that the police are like, sorry, it's over now. It's like, well, if it was you know, in quotes, proven that OJ Mm -hmm. didn't do it, then doesn't that mean that there's some other killer wandering around that you never found or proved that they did it or they could have killed someone else? It's like that taxi driver in America was telling me when he was like, they're so busy. Like they, Mm -hmm. every time they turn around, there's like five more murders to solve. So they... It's true, but still. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not defending it. Like I totally think that this should be i totally think they should put more effort into definitively solving who did it because being found guilty in a civil case doesn't make you 100 percent guilty it doesn't answer any questions like no it doesn't because it's you know what it reminds me of it reminds me of the west memphis three it's like Mm -hmm. so they got exonerated there's still someone out there who's killed little kids right like right. it's still a mass okay it's great that they're not in prison that's fantastic but who fucking did it like right. you don't just yeah. you don't just like fucking wipe your hands and go well that's finished no it's not <laughs> well isn't paul holes working on that oh my god he's is been he? working god, that- on that i think god that's exciting yeah. <laughs> oh god <laughs> it's really exciting so hot for holes he'll find it <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he totally will. How do you know he's involved in that? Has he been posting on his Instagram? I need to keep up more. No, I think he, he mentioned it a while ago that he was working on something to do with that. It could be a TV show. It could be a podcast. I hope it's a podcast. I yeah. love his podcast. And oh my I'm God, he's got such a lovely voice. Gone. Yeah. He, he always pronounces his T's unbelievably <laughs> uh, crisp. He's like... He's, um, he's just very... Um, What's the word? Dictation. He has good yeah. dictation. He enunciates. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like he says, Which is there amazing. was going to be a better day. Like he just always <laughs> says his T's perfectly. It's so good. You know, they're taking Jensen and Hole's podcast off the air. I was like, shit, I better yeah. listen to some before they go. And they had one with Amanda Knox on there. Have you listened to that? Yeah, I know. I don't know. She's so weird. Like, I don't know what to think. People have now accepted her as... They have. Somebody who had a really shitty media experience. Yeah. Was innocent. She's now an authority. Now she's just... She just works... Like, she has podcasts and she does whatever. And I mean, I'm kind of in the same boat as you where I... It still feels really weird. I know. Like, she's probably... Like, but even Paul Hole said... I think you're completely innocent on the podcast. Mm -hmm. And in my head, I'm like, yeah, but the tabloids, like I just, when I was a kid, it was like shoved (laughs) down my throat so hard. It was really, it was really ingrained in us. And it was such a formative time for both of us because you're at that age where everything seeps into your brain. So, you know, you're taking everything in and remembering things like that. And I mean, it just goes to show how dangerous like the media is. If even now it's fucking clear she's innocent it's completely clear right. that she's innocent the evidence right. doesn't hold up they have a suspect <laughs> that they convicted and, and it still feels weird i yeah. know like i know she is innocent but my brain goes maybe not remember the papers <laughs> like kissing your boyfriend the... doesn't make you guilty <laughs> a crime scene no getting drunk doesn't make you guilty either how old was she 20 like yeah something like that she was just acting like a 20 year old who a regular 20 year old girl yeah, yeah. She, do you know what though she is kind of uh eccentric yes she doesn't and realize does, how eccentric she is i think that's yeah i think maybe she does she probably does because she's really yeah. smart but i think that's the part that maybe we don't connect with because yeah it's just like she, what did she have like a star trek wedding or something like that oh my god or i was some kind of alien wedding. it was like a sci-fi she was like explaining it she was going it's kind of like a sci-fi immersive theater um amateur dramatics like um play i was like is this are we still talking about a wedding and she was delivering it with like zero irony being like it was you know kind of immersive like it went from scene to scene and we wrote the whole thing i was just like <laughs> fucking hell and then yeah. i think um 
Billy Johnson said, and you had a really interesting registry, like, you know, people buy you presents or whatever. That was really interesting. And she kind of like gleaned over that. And I'm like, what the fuck was on her registry? Like, it's made me want to go and find it. <laughs> but I, I mean, I wait, feel a bit I bad look, for her. Wait, wait. I feel like we all want to know now. Hold on. Okay. I think she had a website for the wedding. Yeah. For people to RSVP and find out, you know, where it was and stuff. And the press found out and leaked some of the website. So that might be floating around to be accessed somewhere. I saw it. I remember looking it up. Oh, okay. And it was weird. It was just like, here's our <laughs> themed wedding. And it was weird. The thing that the articles are are zeroing in on is not what was on, not the strange things that were on her registry, but that she's asking people who aren't attending to give them money. Oh. That's what... Yeah. It says, Amanda Knox insists she's not crowdfunding her wedding despite sharing public <laughs> registry accepting donations. Again, this is the media painting her in a bad light. They didn't have to do this headline that was worded like that where she's not crowdfunding her wedding. She says she's not, but still she's making her <laughs> donations public. That is, again, the media I putting think you- her in a bad light. Yeah, like whatever journalist wrote that, I think you've trawled the internet to find it and then published it and then gone, she's made it public. No, you found it. Like you searched long and hard to find it. Not like, it's not like on her social media going, please give us money. Exactly. They're not like, shoot. it's not like a GoFundMe. And also when you get married, it's traditional. If you don't go to the wedding, you send a gift and usually it's money. So lots of people give money as a gift for a wedding and you can offer that as an alternative on your registry. Like, hey, don't want to buy us a gift? Just give us money. That's yeah. very normal. The fact that all these articles They've are- They've really twisted it. Yeah, exactly. I still want to know like what it was Billy Yeah, Jensen for him to mention when it. He said that. And when right. he mentioned it, she was like, uh, well, no, like she kind of just- was like uh like didn't want to talk about it she doesn't care she'll talk about anything <laughs> so like i want to i really want to know but yeah anyway that's a good episode of um jensen and holes if anyone wants to listen to it but yeah sorry we were talking about la oh so oj LA. yeah i was gonna say you know we were talking about places that we could have seen and you mm-hmm. said that there was a place where a manson murder happened that was just down your street yeah. What what about like like Rockingham and where OJ lived? Like is that quite far? That's Beverly Hills. So that is West LA. It's not super far. Actually, it's where my boss lives and I went to his house the other day, so Ooh. It, like that area. Fancy. Um it was fancy. Yeah, I mean we could we could have driven past, but the house has been knocked down now. It's not there anymore. What? OJ's house. Yeah, I believe so. There is an OJ tour in LA. Oh, good lord! Yeah, the house was knocked down in 1998. So, oh my god, ages ago. Site there. Yeah, not long after the the murder, which was wow. in 1994. Four, I believe. Yeah, Nicole lived in an apartment building though, so the place where they were murdered that's still there. I think I was watching this program. And the private, so basically, there's a private investigator, and he's written a book called OJ is Innocent and I Can Prove It. That's what his book mm-hmm. is called. <laughs> and if you have uh, Audible, it's free on Audible. It's oh. So I just like, I was like, fuck yeah, I'm listening to that. Um, because they mention it on Small Town Murder as well. He listened to it and then he did a bonus episode on it's basically s- s- uh, summarizing the evidence. And that's what kind of made me super interested in it and made me think, because I'm a Patreon for them, and it made me think, Fucking hell! Maybe OJ didn't actually do the physical killing. Like I'm near. I'm all honestly. I'm open minded to it now. Which before I was like OJ <laughs> is guilty as fuck. That book did its job. It fucking wow. had me. Yeah. Well, I don't think he's innocent, but like I'm. It, what he's saying isn't total and utter horseshit. Basically, you know when you like listen to someone's theory and you're like, no, not in a million years. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. What he was like saying. The was, owl theory in this. Staircase. The owl theory. Carly believes in that. And I swear she just says it to piss me off. <laughs> the thing that I go back to that makes me think that OJ is not innocent is why did he run? Why Why was this, yeah. there this huge car chase? Yeah. Why did he need to do that? 
why is he saying he's going to kill do himself? That if you're innocent. Yeah. Also, there was a phone call. See this, but this kind of fits in with their <laughs> other theory, where he says the police call him and they're like, "Oh, your wife." I can't remember if they say she's been murdered or. I think they say she's been she's been murdered, and he doesn't ask how. Okay. Usually yeah, you go, oh exactly. my god, what happened? He doesn't do that. He just he's like, oh god, okay, I'll come back from Chicago because he left for Chicago, didn't he? Like the night of the murder, like yeah. after it happened, he immediately got on a plane. Um, so that was another reason right. that people are like, you you are guilty as fuck, and uh. Yeah, so, but that that neatly fits in with their story that the son did it because they're like, well, he already knows what happened because his son told him. Right. Maybe, but... I haven't finished the audiobook, you... which okay. I'm going to do. Uh, um, also, going going back to what we were talking about, uh, about how his house was knocked down, but yeah. the condo where, you were right, the condo where the bodies were found... That is still there. It's 875 South Bundy Drive. It's still like wet. It's in Brentwood, which is, again, very fancy. Um, yeah. Yeah, apparently she lived like five minutes away from him. Yeah. that's They all live in that. Like all the wealthy Beverly Hills people. It's like Beverly oh, Hills, Brentwood, okay. that whole. It's very, it's definitely a bubble. Yeah, when you drive there, it's like everything is clean and pristine, and yeah. there's no uh, you. You think when you think about L.A., Talissa, you know there's homeless people everywhere. Brentwood, yeah. Beverly Hills doesn't have that. Huge streets, huge. Do they just sweep away the homeless people? And, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like there's, they don't there's want none that of that. It's it's like it's like a weird bubble of clean, rich people that don't want any any riffraff or dirt or anything <laughs> like that also they were saying that um oj would never park his bronco under a tree because he didn't want it to get leaves or bird shit on it okay <laughs> imagine <laughs> like you've got it is irritating when there's bird shit on your car but you're so rich just get someone to clean it every time you use yeah. it yeah like, <laughs> right get your car cleaned every day why not pay someone yeah. give someone money like they need it yeah I, I mean, I'd clean a car every day for some good cash. Like, I don't mind cleaning. <laughs> yeah. Kind of chills me right. out. Um, yeah, and but uh, Nicole's house is a lot smaller and in an apartment block. Like, that's what I don't get as yeah. well. It the, it must have been so fucking loud. Like, the fight, the murder, and nobody heard anything. Well, condos, and I'm guessing in that area of Brentwood... They're still pretty big. There's a lot of space around. Like you're still paying for privacy and it's a condo. It's not an apart it's like not what we think an apartment is where like people okay. are on top of each other. Condos are more like they're they are still connected and they're still around, but there's they're a lot bigger and Is it like a, a lot- gated community more kind of thing? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the most shocking thing is the guy in the documentary is like He's a PI, right? So he goes he goes through people's rubbish. So he goes mm. through the son's rubbish and is mm -hmm. like, oh, he's drinking a lot of alcohol and um, he's on medication that you shouldn't drink alcohol with. And I'm like, that could be anyone's booze. Like, he doesn't... Yeah. He could have had a party. Like, it doesn't have to just be right. his booze. It's like what the Scientologists do when they go through people's rubbish. It's like, oh, it had loads of booze in it. So, or like... It's like, it's like me, like... I don't drink a lot. Every once in a while, I'll put my bottle of wine. Like I, ha I'm you save up the bottles. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not That's like throwing it out every time I drink it. It's no. accumulating over like two weeks or whatever. That it's doesn't mean that I'm a big drinker. That I that all these bottles of wine and beer I just drank last night. I know. Like it's just such a like shitty not provable statement that it's just <laughs> yeah. because you had the audacity to go through someone's trash right and he right. also says that he gets his like he takes a guy with him because he's not like a massive guy takes a guy and he says oh his job is to take photos and um document stuff or something like that no no his job 
as you discover, <laughs> is just to be his bodyguard. Like, because this guy okay. is really big. He's like six foot yeah. something and over 200 pounds. And he says, oh, I got him to look out for me. And then I fucking hopped the fence at Nicole's apartment. That's so not cool. No. He's literally not. trespassing. Like, and he's That's just like, creepy. yeah. And I was, it's so creepy. And he was like, yeah. Cause they must have like watched as well to make sure there was no one there. Yeah. I don't know. Like staked it out for a bit or maybe researched who lived there and what they did and when they would be in and right. he jumps the fence and then he's like filming going oh yeah they said that the perpetrator hid in the bushes but they couldn't have hidden because look how little foliage there is here and there's a brick wall here mm. and i'm just like you're acting like you're not trespassing yeah you did it you just hop the fence and no one sees you so clearly it can be done yeah he's not cool he's fucking underhand <laughs> I don't know what his motivation is. Why he's so interested in this case. Yeah. I guess it's just to write the book and get money, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, probably. I would believe that. I was just going to say that reminds me. I don't know if like my phone is listening to me or oh God, there's it definitely an algorithm. Is. <laughs> <laughs> the, the algorithm. But I've all of, all of a sudden been getting these emails that are jobs that you can apply for. And the jobs are specifically investigator assistants. Oh my and I was god. Like, why do I why do I keep getting these emails? And I looked it up. I was like, what even is an investigative assistant? Like what is that? And I yeah. looked it up and it is somebody that it reminded me because you said this guy like hired a bodyguard and I was like, yeah. you know. It is basically someone who processes all of these things that the detective or the investigator is finding. Oh my god, are you going to do it? I'm like, <laughs> it's really good money. <laughs> is it? Oh my god. Yeah. It's like oh, over no. 100 grand a year. Whoa. Maybe I'm going to move yeah. over and do it. <laughs> You'd be so good at it. I really would it. be. You should. I would be fucking great. <laughs> I'd be like Erin yeah, Brockovich. <laughs> <laughs> I think to close out our true crime chat on LA. Yeah. Both the Manson murders and the OJ trial were two huge things that happened in LA that really impacted LA. I was reading about it earlier today that mm -hmm. the Manson murders, before they happened, it was the 60s and everyone in LA was just this, it was like this free, everyone was enjoying themselves, having a great time, taking drugs. Yeah. Um, connecting with each other. And then the Manson murders happened and it completely changed how people in L.A. just lived and talked to each other. Nobody felt safe anymore. And it's not the same as what happened with the O.J. trial, but it did change how people looked at it because so much of it was centered around race. And yeah. that's how they got him acquitted was they basically said... If you think that OJ did it, then you are a racist. Yeah. And that is how he got free. And it really shifted how things, how it people were was in like, LA. If you were white, you thought he was guilty. If you were black, you thought he was innocent. Mm -hmm. Like that was the general yeah. consensus like right. at the time. There was a huge divide. Yeah, it ripped people in half. And that was, it happened just after the Rodney King, Rodney yes, King got exactly. beaten up, which kicked off some riots. And then that was a real like black versus white thing. It's yeah. a bit like the Black Lives Matter protests today, except I think there's a lot more white people on the side of good this time. Right. Yeah. Um, than there were in the 80s. Obviously, it's still like, there's still a massive divide and there's still a lot of racism. But yeah, like the Manson murders kind of kicked off that whole serial killer fucking did. nutty shit in LA, I right? feel. <laughs> after that, it was like floodgates. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. People felt really unsafe after that when before they didn't. It was like exactly what you think. Hippie, 60s America, flower crowns, acid, communes, all that kind of stuff. And then and then this just like flatlined everyone. It was like no more fun anymore. <laughs> well, I feel like there's still pockets of flower crowns and acid yeah. around LA. Oh, and I felt a like I saw <laughs> yes, I felt like Joshua Tree exists. was one of them. <laughs> yeah. 
California will always have that. Yeah, Carly very much enjoyed her sage that I brought her back to burn, by the way. Aww. <laughs> she was like, did you steal this from the Airbnb? And I was like, no, I bought it, you fucker. <laughs> I also bought three different kinds. Do you remember that from that little shop? So yeah, I think I, I can am even a little remember. bit of those. <laughs> I am a little bit of those people as well. I'm I'm sort of in you that. You can't boat, live so there I, without okay. being a little bit sage, Bernie. It's the law. I don't think you can. Yeah, <laughs> it just Definitely. happens naturally. Okay, so I better let you go burn some sage. <laughs> Clear this bad <laughs> juju. I'll let you get back to your feet. (laughs) Fet? Is that what it's called? Fate. And your pints. Fate. Yeah. And your pints and your cups of tea. (laughs) British people love feet. Okay. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Well. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoy our special guest next week, whoever it may be. I don't know who it is yet. I I can Mm. guess. Uh, yeah, I don't have that many friends. Me pos- <laughs> send me positive vibes, and yeah. hopefully, uh, I'll be back and I'll be talking much better than I am now without this big metal piece in my mouth. Oh, okay, Rach. Well, come on, All you right. can do it, Tiger. All right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Transatlantic Crime this week. If you liked what you heard, please rate, review, and subscribe. And if you'd like to follow us on social media, you can find us on Twitter at Transat Crime Pod, Instagram at Transatlantic Crime, and on Facebook with Transatlantic Crime Podcast. Thanks, bye.